Okay, now let's actually start talking about some quantum algorithms. So here's a chronology of some of the early quantum algorithms, and we're going to actually cover these algorithms in this exact order in this class. So the way that these algorithms were developed is a really nice progression of ideas that makes it good to actually teach things in this order. So in particular, uh, Deutsch Choser, Bernstein Vazirani, Simon's algorithm, they all kind of use the, the same framework. And then Shor's factoring algorithm was kind of directly developed from Simon's algorithm. If you look on the Kiskit YouTube channel, um, so just search on YouTube, maybe Peter Shore Kiskit, you should come up with a video of Peter Shore actually discussing how he came up with his discrete logarithm and factoring algorithms. And he talks about how he actually reviewed Simon's algorithm for a conference and I think pretty immediately had the idea, uh, was inspired by that for the idea for his discrete logarithm algorithm. And then just something like a few weeks later came up with his factoring algorithm. So that's a, that's a really interesting video to watch. And then finally, Grover's search algorithm is, is a little bit different, um, and we're going to talk about that after, after the others. Okay, so for today, the plan is first we're going to review the action of the Hadamard transformation. The Hadamard transformation plays a very important role in all of these early algorithms. Then we're going to talk about the Oracle model, something called the phase kickback trick, and then we'll actually go over both Deutsch Josa and Bernstein Vazirani algorithms today. Okay, so let's start by reviewing what the Hadamard does. So let's say we just have uh, three qubits here, and we apply Hadamard gate to each qubit. Um, so what does that do for us? Okay, so everything is a tensor product here, right? So when we apply Hadamards like that, it's like applying the threefold tensor product of the Hadamard gate to this zero tensor zero tensor zero state. So we can actually write this uh, equivalently as the threefold tensor product of the Hadamard applied to zero. Okay, now we know what the Hadamard does to zero. It just maps it to zero plus one times one over root two. So we have this uh, tensor product with itself three times. Okay, and now when you expand this, you're going to get every possible combination of 0 and 1. Okay, so we're going to have a sum over all 3-bit strings of ket x, and the coefficient is just going to be 1 over root 2 cubed. Okay, so basically what we get here is a superposition, uniform superposition over all 3-bit strings. Okay, so you can easily generalize this argument to an n-qubit state. Um, so when you apply the infold tensor product of the Hadamard to an n-qubit state, you just get a uniform superposition over all n-bit strings. Okay, so this is you know really good to know. Uh, many many algorithms start off by creating the uniform superposition. Okay, so let's also review what happens when we apply the Hadamard to an arbitrary basis state, uh, computational basis state. So let's say we have some n-bit string x. Let's apply uh, the infold tensor product of the Hadamard to x. Okay, again, we can you know, write this as a tensor product. So, so what is this? Um, I mean, x is a tensor product state, right? It's just a tensor product of xj, right, where xj is the jth bit of x. So what we have here is h tensor n applied to this tensor product state, which of course is just the tensor product of h applied to xj. Okay, now again we know what h does to xj. We can succinctly write that as, as, fo as the following. So it's 0 plus minus 1 to the xj times 1. Okay, so we have the tensor product of that, and now we need to expand this tensor product. Okay, so now when we expand this tensor product, of course we're also going to get a superposition over all 
in bit strings, we're going to get every possible combination of 0 and 1 here. But now we have this phase on the one state. Um, so we need to do a little bit of computation to figure out uh, what, what the amplitude is going to be in front of a given computational basis state. OK, so let's work that out. Um, OK, so let's uh, consider some, some, uh, some state y. So y is some in-bit string. And we want to figure out what the uh, amplitude on y is going to be. OK, so now if, if yj is 0, OK, then uh, that's going to be coming from this term. So there's going to be no, uh, we're not going to pick up any phase there, okay? But if yj is 1, then it's going to be coming from, from this term, okay? So we're going to be picking up a factor of minus 1 if yj is 1, and also, right, when do we get a minus 1 here? Well, if xj is 1. So if yj is 1 and xj is 1, Okay, then we're going to be picking up this factor of minus 1 here. So the total number of times we're going to pick up a factor of minus 1 is the number of j for which yj is 1 and xj is 1. And that is just x dot y. Okay, so the coefficient that we're going to have in front of y is just minus 1 to the x dot y. Okay, so we end up with this state here. Okay, good. So if you can't see that, that is just the sum over all y. Minus 1 to the x dot y, y. Okay, so this is a very useful formula for what the Hadamard does to an arbitrary computational basis state. Okay, so now let's move on to the Oracle model. So a lot of these early quantum algorithms take place in the Oracle model. So what is the Oracle model? Uh, in the Oracle model, we're basically just given a, a black box, you know, a, a black box circuit. And so we can use this black box in our algorithms. And usually we want to figure out some property of the black box. So we want to apply the black box as few number of times as possible in order to determine some property of the black box. So more specifically, um, usually the black box encodes some function, some Boolean function f, say from 0, 1 to the n to 0, 1. And the black box has the following behavior, you know, how does it encode this function f? Well, it basically, um, so given a uh, basis state x tensor b, so x is an in-bit string here, b is just a bit, um, the oracle basically puts the value of or adds the value of f to b in the second register. So here it adds the value mod 2 in the second register. OK, so for that reason, I usually call this a, a, mod, a mod oracle. OK, because it's basically writing the value of f uh, plus b modulo 2 in the second register. OK, so that's... Um, so we're basically you know, given this unitary OF, and we want to use OF, you know, apply OF, as few number of times as possible in order to determine some property of F. So that's, that's the game in this Oracle model. OK, so um, here's a very common starting point for quantum algorithms in the Oracle model. So we do what we, what we just saw. We initialize the state to you know, 0 to the n tends of 0. We apply Hadamard on the first register, just identity on the second register. That creates a uniform superposition. And then we apply the oracle. Okay, And since you know, the second register has 0, that just puts the value of f of x in the second register. Okay, So now we have the state. Okay, so, you know, at first glance, this seems to be, uh, you know, a very powerful thing to do. Right now we have a superposition over all x of x tensor f of x. But 
but really it's still not obvious you know how you can how you can use this state right like if we were just to to measure the state right now all we'd get is just a random value of x and the value of f of x okay so that's something that you could also get just with a randomized algorithm okay so you still have to be clever in order to figure out what to do next right how you can use this state to really do something useful okay so now let's talk about another uh, trick that you see a lot in, um, in this oracle model so there's basically another version of the oracle so right first we discussed the mod oracle so the second version of the oracle is called a phase oracle okay and again we have we have an n bit uh, x is an n bit string here b is just a bit and the phase oracle instead of writing the value of f uh, you know mod b in, in the second register i'm sorry plus b mod 2 in the second register the phase oracle uh, kind of puts the value of f of x in the phase. Okay, so specifically, it multiplies the state by minus 1 to the b times f of x. Okay, so if b is 0, it's, it's never going to do anything. But if b is 1, then it flips the phase if f of x is 1, and otherwise it, it, it does nothing. Okay, so this is a phase oracle. So sometimes a phase oracle is more uh, convenient to use in algorithms. Um, and what we're going to see now is that even if I give you the mod oracle, you can implement a phase oracle, uh, you can implement a call to the phase oracle with just one call to the mod oracle. Okay, so basically uh, what this means is that if I ask you to design an algorithm and I give you a mod oracle, you can just as easily assume that I give you a phase oracle because you can convert uh, the mod oracle to a phase oracle. Okay, so let's see how that works. Uh, okay, so we're going to start out just by applying identity to the first register and a Hadamard to the second register. Um, so that creates 0 plus minus 1 to the b on, this, on the second register. Okay, and then we're going to apply uh, the mod oracle. Okay, so let's see what that does. Um, so when the second register is 0, it's just going to put f of x. When the second register is 1, it's going to put f of x plus 1 mod 2, which basically just negates the value of, of f of x. Okay, now this next step is a little bit tricky. Um, I think there's kind of no easier way to see it than just uh, going through some some case analysis here to see that uh, this state is the same as this state. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's first consider the case that b is 0. So when b is 0, this is just uh, 0 plus 1 inside here. Okay, it doesn't matter if f of x is 0 or 1. Um, this is always going to be 1, so this state is always just 0 plus 1. Okay, so on this line, when b is 0, then of course uh, this term here is just going to be 1, and here we're going to get 0 plus 1. Okay, so they agree when b is 0. Uh, let's now consider the case where b is 1. And again, let's just do some case analysis. So let's say that f of x is 0. Uh, then what are we going to get? On this line, we're going to get 0 minus 1. Okay, so in this case, we have 0 minus 1. And when f of x is 1, then on this line, we're going to have 1 minus 0. Okay. Okay, good. Now let's see what we have on this line. So in the case uh, b is 1 and f of x is 0, then this phase is going to be 1. So we just have 0 minus 1. So that agrees with what we have here. In the case 
that both b and f of x are 1, then we're going to get a minus 1 here, and this is 0 minus 1. The minus 1, we flip it, and we get uh, 1 minus 0. Okay, so that agrees. Okay, so this is a valid derivation here. So let's move on um, the, to step number three. We're just going to apply the Hadamard again to the second register. The second register is 0 plus minus 1 to the b times 1. We apply a Hadamard to that. That just maps this back to b. Okay, so we have minus 1 to the b times f of x uh, times x tensor b. Okay, and that's exactly what, what a phase oracle does. Okay, it puts this minus 1 to the b times f of x in the phase. Okay, so now we've seen how to implement uh, the action of a phase oracle with one call to the mod oracle. Okay, and this argument goes the other way around as well. So if I give you a phase oracle, you can implement a mod oracle with one call to that phase oracle.